Hey kids, it's Mr. Fla here, hope you're well. Out and about today on a rather sad ride because it's the last time I'm going to be riding this. The brand new for 2020 BMW S1000XR. So if you're interested in my final thoughts on the bike, stick around and stay tuned. Well, my final thoughts on the bike, the spoiler alert can be summed up very simply. It's an absolutely amazing bike. Not for me, of which more later, but it is a beautiful, beautiful machine. The things that stick out in my mind for this, having ridden this now for the last couple of weeks or so, I've ridden it as my sort of daily ride and ridden it as much as I can and got to know the bike. Now I'm stuck behind a very slow car, oh well. Is that the bike, it is a sports tourer, but it's very much puts the sports into sports tourer. It's an amazingly quick bike. It's got the S1000RR derived engine in it, albeit tuned differently for a more mid-range. And it's just the perfect road bike if you're a sporty rider. If you're coming from a sports bike and you're thinking you might want to go more upright, more sensible, for want of a better word, then this is definitely a bike to consider. Because from a comfort point of view, the riding position is lovely. It reminds me very much of my GS actually. Big wide handlebars, nice and upright quite a big frontal area nice protection from the wind so it's pretty comfortable in that respect it's not very comfortable in terms of the seat which is uh, pretty hard but that said it's actually not that uncomfortable on a long run I've done a few long runs on this bike now and actually I haven't really suffered really bad bum trauma it's just a very thin seat and it means you can't move around a lot so uh, if you're a bigger guy I don't know you might have a bit of an issue but actually it's quite well sculpted, it you know, cups your cheeks nicely. And it's got that uh, four-cylinder character about it, which means it's in the main very smooth. Now I say in the main, just take this Prius. Woo! <laughs> because the bike does suffer from vibrations at certain uh, rev settings, so for me, when I'm on the motorway, if I'm doing uh, 75 miles an hour, there are some annoying vibes. They're not really, really terrible, actually. I've moaned about them a lot in the videos I've made on this bike. But I've kind of slapped myself about the face a bit and said, look, if you don't want vibes, don't ride a motorcycle. And to be honest, if you're riding on a motorway fast, then those vibes disappear and it just becomes like riding a sports bike. But you are then at, if you're doing it in the UK, you'd be at illegal speeds, you'd be fine on the Autobahn. So there are some vibes there, they're always constant in my mind, but they're not terrible. They're not the type that gives you, you know, arm pump and your feet pins and needles. You're just aware that it's not uh, maybe as smooth as some other touring bikes you might have ridden in the past. But agility, it has loads of. The handling on it is just sublime, and I've really enjoyed that. Okay, I've got to be a little bit careful here and watch where I'm going because uh, I'm heading down to sort of Guildford Way, Farnborough actually, hoping to find the M3 because I'm taking this back to uh, BMW UK today as I say and they're based down there. I just want to check and make sure this turn isn't going to take me through the middle of Bracknell. Uh, yes it is, I don't think I'm going to go that way, I'm going to ignore the sat nav and head this way. So I'm going off piece, always a dangerous thing to do. It's a lovely part of the world around here, if you've never been around here this is uh, near Ascot, there's some beautiful houses here, but uh, I can just cut the corner and avoid going through the middle of Bracknell if my memory serves me right. Anyway, back to the bike. Other things that have surprised me about the bike in a good way, things like uh, the panniers. I've got the panniers on this bike. They're colour-coded, they look quite smart. They're actually very practical. You can fit a proper full-faced helmet or indeed a peaked adventure-style helmet in the side cases, and you can fit a normal full-face in the uh, top box itself so very practical from that point of view and I've also ridden the bike fairly extensively with my missus on the back and from me as a from a rider's point of view with a pillion on it I just didn't notice she was there she complained a little bit about um, vibrations and again you know do check out my other videos I'll put a link in the corner of this one I've made lots of videos on this bike since I've had it go and check those out particularly if you want the pillions view and you can hear what she said but as a rider as I say I found it really nice taking pillions so for short journeys in particular no problem at all 
And then the other complaint that I used to have about the uh, XR before this 2020 version came out was, uh, and this is a, just a very personal thing, I didn't like the looks of it very much. It had that squinty front end that I'm always talking about. Well, BMW have done a big new styling job on this now, and I think, think there's anything to not like about the looks now. Of course, very personal point. You may disagree and think that the bike doesn't look very good. There is quite a lot of plastic on it. I know some people have complained about that, but actually I think they've done a nice job in, in the way that the design kind of flows. And actually, when you're sat here in the cockpit, the stuff you're looking at is all very nicely done and feels like quality stuff. Better just slow down, as I'm in a 30 here. And that is one of the issues with this bike. Because it does have that very eager four-cylinder engine, it's always urging you on to ride the thing like a maniac. Which again, if you're coming from a sports bike background, you might love that. But it means it's quite difficult to ride this thing legally all the time. I've struggled with that because it's just egged me on to ride fast all the time. Riding here in this 30 mile an hour zone, in third, the bike isn't complaining at all but it just feels like it's really really slow and it wants to go quicker. I have found the fueling to be a little bit of an issue in really slow traffic. In first gear, when you're just crawling along, it can be a little bit jerky then, which may be an issue for you. But overall, and the overriding factor that I found about this bike is every time I get off it, I've got a smile on my face. It does make you feel good, this bike. It makes you feel like you can go anywhere at the mere twist of the throttle, which you can because it's so fast, as I've mentioned. I mean, you could argue that it's lacking in a bit of character. It's very Germanic. It's almost too perfect. Everything works on it perfectly, like the quick shifter is brilliant on this. The sat-nav integration is fantastic, and for me, is a major plus of BMWs generally. If you're going to get one equipped to one of the sat-navs, this whiz wheel arrangement, the way that that's all integrated, the beautiful TFT that uh, BMW do, absolutely great. And all those are big plus points for me if you're making a buying decision about a bike like this. Oh, I've talked to the sat-nav, it wants me to turn off again. Do I want to turn off there or not? Let's have a look. Uh, I think I might want to, actually. Uh, 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 yeah, let's do that one. See where it takes us. Yeah, looks like this could help. Looks like I'm missing out. Bracknell, as planned. Nothing against Bracknell. It's more fun riding around these roads on this bike than going through the centre of town. So where was I? Yes, the uh, so the Germanic precision about it, you could see that as a plus or a minus. So you could say it's a bit lacking in character as a motorbike. But all that said, you do get off it with a smile on your face. So that's a good thing. Oh, a white van up here stops play as ever. So as a motorcycle YouTuber, I'm very lucky I get to ride all sorts of new latest and greatest bikes of all different types and genres as well. And some bi bikes, you know, float your bike and some don't, do they? Some of them you give them back and I have a little smile inside about the machine. Some bikes I give them back and think, well, I don't care if I never ride that again. Well, this bike definitely fits in the former category. It's a bike that I shall uh, will have fond regards for. So then, why wouldn't I buy one myself? As I said at the start of the video, it's not for me. Well, for some of the reasons I've said, the, the main thing is this fact that it does egg you on. But here I am again, I found myself doing 40 then in the 30 mile an hour limit without even thinking about it. It just eggs you on all the time to go fast and I just think I'd lose my license on it. So that's one thing. The second thing is, I do ride my big touring bike. I currently ride a BMW GS, which shares many of the attributes of this in terms of its comfort and, well, it's better comfortable to be fair. I'll come back to that in a minute. But uh, on the GS, I do carry my wife quite a lot. I do carry a pillion and I use it as a touring bike. That's what I would use this bike for. And my missus gave this a bit of a thumbs down as a passenger. Again, going back and check my previous videos on that if you want to find out more about that. So that's a negative point for me. You may not have to take a pillion, so that might not matter to you. And the other thing, which I think is the big point for me, and the reason why I wouldn't buy one, is actually living with it, for me as a smaller guy, is, is a bit tricky. Moving it in and out of the garage is really awkward. I find the bike really heavy to move. Now people say, hang on, what are you talking about? You've got a BMW GS, that's a heavier bike than this, which is true in terms of if you just put it on the scales. But actually getting this off the side stand, it leans over a very long way on its short side stand. It's a real heft to lift it off the side stand. Moving it out of the garage, really hard work. Uh, I've got dodgy shoulders, I'm an old fella and I've got you know, arthritis and it, uh, I just find it hard to get off the side stand, hard to move around and that for me is the biggest reasons why I wouldn't buy an XR. So all those reasons are very, very specific to my particular use case. I need to carry a passenger, I've got dodgy arms and I'm a small fella and I don't want to lose my license, you might have more restraint than me. That's what would put me off buying the bike. But if those things don't matter to you, then absolutely have this on your list of must-ride sport touring bikes, because it just works beautifully. I think it looks good, 
as I say, it rides and handles really, really well. It's got all the attributes of uh, you know BMWs that we know and love, the integration of the whiz wheel, the amazing sat nav, great wind protection, the brilliant BMW buying experience, the quality of the machine, and the most important thing, you get off the bike with a big smile on your face, you cannot ask for more than that. All right, so that's it. That's pretty much it for this video. It's just a quick summing up, really, of my time on this bike. What one of the feelings that I'm left with? Well, overwhelmingly positive. Nice bike. I've gone banged on and on about the vibes, but actually, that's not one of the things that would stop me buying it. You get over that. So don't let those stop you. Uh, stop you getting the bike if you're interested. All right, that's it for now. I hope that was of some interest. Look forward to reading your comments below to seeing if you uh, agree or disagree with any of the things I've said about the bike. And I look forward to uh, speaking to you next time. If you haven't done so already, do hit that subscribe button. That way uh, you can join me on the next video. All right, speak to you then. Until then, this has been the Mr. Fly. Cheerio.